está carregando. Tá. Mas ele tem que passar ali de 30%, pelo menos. Hã? Está parado. Foi, cara! Tá. Pô. Mas ele tem que passar ali de 30%, pelo menos. Não, tá parado. Tá, tá dando 20%. Tá, tá dando 20%. Foi, cara! Saiu, foi tudo. Ah, agora chegou. É, chegou aqui, tá, cara. Pronto. Não, tá parado. Tá, tá parado. Tá, tá parado. Valeu, cara! Valeu, falou. Saiu, foi
Hi, Professor. Good morning. Good evening, Brazil. How are you? I'm fine. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Nice <laughs> to see you again. Yes, same to you. So, uh, now, I guess, we are live. Diego, you want to try to to play the video one more time? Sure. Oh, Diego, you want you want to you want to play the video one more time? Is Diego there? I'm not sure. Let me see if I can do it. Hi. Hey, Diego, you want to try to play the video one more time? Can you do this? Your mic is off. One more time? Yeah, please. We had a problem with this? the audio of the video. I think okay. Better start the, the, the Your meeting. mic is off. One more time? Yeah, please. We had a problem with the audio of the video. Okay, let me see if I can do it. One second. Okay, I'll try to share my screen. Goodbye. 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 Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Now, let's see what happened. Torço muito para que esse projeto dê renda a excelente fruto. A coisa mais importante que tem em cirurgia é a anatomia. Se você não sabe a anatomia, você não pode ser cirurgião. cirurgia cardíaca é uma das coisas mais bonitas, uma das cirurgias mais, as especialidades mais bonitas e que mais é, pode mudar a qualidade de vida do paciente. da formação do cirurgião cardiovascular, a liderança de um grupo grande de pessoas.
que isso é um futuro e vocês são o futuro da Silvia Carvalho. I just shot a message to the whole Brazilian region. You know, uh, all your patients relying on you and for the desperate situation. And we need to be the best of the best for the patient, for your patient, to make patient happy. And uh, that is our mission as a cardiac surgeon. Actually, professor, this was a, a a bigger video. This is not the compact one, but it, it was good to have the opportunity to show all the professor that gave us the lecture. And as you can see, you finish the video with your speech, and I can see I can say for myself uh, that speech. Uh, keep keep in my mind, you know, this the, your your words. I I I will bring with me. Uh, the patients uh, look for us in a desperate situation, and our mission is to make patient happy and to be the best of the best. You you finished your last lecture with this speech, and I really believe that this is a big true and a big true treasure that we have and then and that's that is our mission right that's thank very you. much thank you very much <clears throat> that was a fantastic video won't you put in a uh, youtube i will do it if, uh, and i will i will show you the compact one we have another one that is shorter maybe 40 seconds something like this and we want to use it like an opening video for our, all our lectures. And I will give it to you. So, guys, um, we just started. Now we are live with Professor Turu Asai. And it's a pleasure to have him again with us. I had the pleasure to meet him in person last year in Milan in a lecture that he gave to... Professor Alfieri, Michele De Bonis, and a lot of other great surgeons. So, as as you can see from this information and from his previous lecture, he's a great surgeon. And today he he will talk about his special technique of mitral repair, the butterfly technique. So we can also discuss a little bit about mitral repair. And Professor Turuasai last year when he spoke with us, he was in Shiga. Now he's working in Juntendo University in, Je in Tokyo. And he did his, his cardiothoracic uh, residency in New York, US. And there, he told me that he was very impressed about mitral valve and how his mentors, they studied and, and how they operated the mitral valve. And now he developed this great technique and I'm sure that you will enjoy his videos and all that he will bring to us. Please, Professor. Thank you for your kind introduction, Marcio. It's my pleasure to meet you again, and also the Brazilian resident. Well, uh, let me start the video uh, PowerPoint. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay, let me start. Today's topic is uh, degenerative mitral valve regurgitation, also degenerative mitral valve remodeling, so-called, which is caused by pathology of this disease, and my technique butterfly. 
Butterfly technique is not really special, but I think very natural way of thinking you will find out. This is one of the famous uh, presentation by uh, Dr. Enrique Serrano that mitral valve repair have a better long-term outcome compared to mitral valve replacement, especially degenerative patients. In the long term, 10 years, even 12, 14 years, incidence of the death and the congestive heart failure is significantly less with a patient with mother valve repair. And even more, in the guideline 2006, ACC AHA finally mentioned to the uh, center or surgeon Cardiologists are strongly encouraged to refer patients who are candidates for mitral valve repair to surgical centers or surgeon experience in my performing mitral valve repair. So mitral valve repair became very important part of cardiac surgery practice. Why? Mitral valve is not just uh, a uh, system to stop the regurgitation. Mitral valve complex, mitral leaflets, corridor tendineae, and um, papillary muscle, this complex is a part of the left, left ventricle. It plays an important role in cardiac contraction. Mitral valve consists of five components. <laughs> We need to know uh, anatomy and the physiology more in terms to perform better uh, repair. There's the leaflets, corda, papillary muscle, annulus, and the left ventricle itself. These four, five components having a very important role for the mitral valve function as well as left ventricular function. Aim of mitral valve repair is uh, it's a good durable repair because if it is not durable, it's, that's a long-term outcome, it's less than replacement. We need to understand better detailed anatomy, also pathological change and consequence of MR. Then we consider to choose appropriate skill set for mitral valve disease in each patient. Mitral valve replacement or aortic valve replacement is very uniform. It can be done in the, exactly the same way to the patient. However, mitral valve repair may be sometimes difficult for the beginner. Why? Because mitral valve anatomy, mitral valve pathology, the prolapsing part that extends annular dilatation may be different. That is why sometimes a uh, surgeon feel difficulty. We need to adjust. We need to uh, uh, check the pathology in each, each patient. In order to understand the major valve uh, regurgitation, a uh, famous professor Carpentier uh, classified four type or even three, type one, type two, type three A and three B, which probably, Marcia, have you seen this classification? Are you familiar with this? Probably Brazilian resident is smart enough to understand this stuff. But this classification, the basically classified de depending on the leaflet motion, normal leaflet motion, or even excess leaflet motion, which leaflet prolapse, and restricted leaflet opening or restricted closure, these uh, four types. However, that may not be enough. My thinking, we may need another classification, another way of thinking, which depending on leaflet tissue volume, 
some patients have a very limited amount of leaflet area. On the other hand, uh, extreme barrow disease, for example, extensive degenerative disease have a very redundant leaflet. So leaflet tissue volume may be excessive or normal or deficient. For example, disease, barrow disease, chronic degenerative, or sometimes HOCM have a small chamber, but uh, too much uh, tissue, which causing some. PM rupture or acute cold rupture, usually almost normal. On the other hand, elderly patients who have a leaflet distraction, I mean, uh, fibro uh, elastic deficiency type of things, or left ventricular dysfunction, uh, only annual dilatation, there is a very limited area of coaptation. We may have to think about the leaflet volume. So, when you take a look at uh, this much valve uh, after excellent exposure, what do you think? Well, you may see this just ruptured corda and a P2. This is typical P2 prolapse. This is a piece of cake, easy case. Corda rupture is only abnormality in a posterior leaflet. Is that true? My answer is no. So the question, what is the feature of mitral leaflet in degenerative mitral disease? To answer this question, I have systematically measured directly intraoperative measurement, A2, P1, P2, P3, four points. The height of leaflet was measured in my past series. No matter how uh, it is a prolapse or without prolapse. So these four points were measured past nine years. I found interesting things. Most prolapse in posterior leaflet have a redundancy in variable degree. For example, P2, you see this is the distribution of the height. X axis is the height of the P2. On the other hand, this is the number of patients. So you see the 14 or 15 millimeter is the average or median height of this uh, P2. Pitch is uh, exactly the same number of uh, Professor Carpentier once uh, described. On the other hand, let's see P2 with prolapsing. You see some P2 prolapse are very short However, most patients having a redundant area, average 22 or 23 millimeter of the height. So the corda rupture is not only the pathology. There must be always some elongation or redundancy in the height. But that degree in each case varies. Speech is, uh, I, I think, it's important thing. Redundancy varies considerably. However, some redundancy is yes. That same thing can be said in P1, P3, even A2. So, depending on the product, uh, we have to be aware what's the uh, appropriate uh, for, I mean, uh, repair technique. Butterfly technique is indicated when the height of the prolapse segment is very redundant. So, so what I'm saying is redundancy, height, and also you will see this margin of the leaflet is also along it. Redundancy with the change sometimes causes the problem. 
I can no, hear your voice, but we have the. Uh, okay. Uh, but you can you can watch my share like this. Like this. This, this is the sound. sound. Yeah. And yeah. you both can hear me. Just remember for, for you. you. I mean, I this mean, is important. important. This is it's intraoperative trans esophageal echo. echo. Trans esophageal echo, echo is not the perfect to detect the sound. That is that another is problem. problem. You see, there is a ring, ring, ring here. Ring here. Ring here. here. That have acoustic shadow. shadow. Do you understand, you understand my, my... Can you can hear, hear me? me? Yeah, I can hear yeah. you. Okay. okay. Right. What I'm saying is, this, this is not... This is a lucky case. case. This is a lucky case. case. We could find a sound here. here. Professor, However, please, I'm sorry. Please try to mute and then unmute your mic. Let's see if the audio gets better. Move, move you said. Yeah, you okay. move and then you unmute. Okay. So this is the color that causes uh, matter regurgitation, which could not be seen by water tests, serine tests during cardiac arrest. Thinking of these 10 factors, these three could be managed medically. You can reduce, it, I mean, dopamine or the butamine to minimize uh, tachycardia and also you give some volume for the uh, coming of bypass. However, upper support, these could not be managed medically. So we should be responsible for the surgical repair. That's the point. So CSEF, what's a CSEF? It is the distance between the mitral valve coaptation and intraventricular septum, CSEF. This distance, 
this distance could be smaller or larger depending on how you repair mitral valve. And if it is very small, it is problematic because when the heart ejects, this tip of anterior leaflet sucking into the left ventricular axle tract. Yeah. So this is also written in a gu guideline book, in an American guideline. So butterfly dissection, I haven't talked about butterfly yet, but butterfly dissection is uh, actually a procedure making sure this co-optation to be away from septum. You will see, this is a post-operative SAM. You will have too much redundant anterior leaflet uh, area below the co-optation line. That would be a big trouble. Also, this distance need to be a little bit uh, longer. That can be achieved with uh, non-dissectional policy promoted by Dr. Perrier and others, which could be pull this posterior leaflet the way all the way to the papillary muscle that causes a big leaflet to be uh, positioned posteriorly. Butterfly dissection is a making posterior leaflet in a normal size. So making, uh, you know, normal configurated mitral valve. Historically, Dr. Carpentier popularized mitral valve repair with the standard uh, quadrangular dissection with annular application. But Dr. Carpentier admit up to 15% of the patient having SAM. This is very reproducible technique and many of mitral repair surgeons uh, employed at the beginning. There is two drawbacks, occasional incidence of SAM also, this plication, sometimes, I know, rarely, very rare, but says occasionally called circumflex kinking obstruction. So, 1991, their group introduced height reduction procedure, which is sliding leaflet plasty, you may know with the annular application or annular compression. This is from Dr. Adams and Dr. Carpentier's textbook. This is whole area was uh, reduced, the height reduction of remaining leaflet. However, what you see, you, you have to take out the whole area of the leaflet. This P1 and P3, maybe just a normal leaflet, which I think too much leaflet resection. One of the danger or complication of annular application or annular compression suture is if circumflex artery is very, very close to mitral annulus, this application may be dangerous. This person having acute myocardial infarction with the uh, circumflex kinking, which is proven by angiogram. This is a scary situation. When I was in New York, I just met this sad case. So their group, NYU group, Dr. Grossi, Dr. Corvin, they advocated this uh, quadriangular resection, however, they're not plicating. They're just folding down the cut margin, what they called folding plastic, which was 
fairly reasonable. However, this cut margin was twisted, distorted sometimes. It's not really good for some cases. So my idea is actually butterfly, which this shape or remaining leaflet looks like butterfly. Charming naming, don't you think? It's my <laughs> okay. I I started this butterfly two thousand six, which is quite new. My concept, the beginning, first published two thousand eleven in the Innovation Journal of uh, Ismic Society. This animation showed what butterfly is. We start with some triangular dissection, which cut off these uh, leaflet, uh, actually the cord rupture or prolapsing area, or in other words, the elongated area. Then, since we have a target height, we know the 15 or 14 is the normal height of the P2. We make it 15 millimeter of the cut margin domain and lower down the second triangular resection with the perform and bring these remaining leaflet to rotate it down to annulus like this. Now we don't need a plication. Plication may be uh, dangerous. Plication may be making a uh, whole annulus smaller, which is not good for the sun. Beautiful. Complete with the uh, uh, total ring. If you have a question or a comment, you can just interrupt me. We have some other videos. But do you understand? That's a butterfly technique. However, if you think about it, some surgeon just use triangular dissection instead of a quadrangular dissection. Butterfly dissection may be regarded as uh, limited or focal sliding leaflet technique for triangular dissection rather than quadrangular dissection. So no annular application and also we can control the height. You want to make it the 10, you can make it 10 millimeter height of the resultant leaflet segment. So you compared, this is a quadrangular dissection. This is sliding leaflet technique. And this is a butterfly dissection. What you see with the butterfly dissection, we have more, I think, remaining area of uh, prolapsing segment. So you don't have to worry about too much deficient with cutting. We also presented in San Diego in, uh, I think, STS meeting. We compared quadrangular dissection, the butterfly dissection, and the midterm echographic finding. We check this long axis view in echocardiogram in a clinic. What we see is uh, this anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet projection ratio, also coaptation to septal distance, also coaptation length, coaptation depth, these are significantly better with uh, butterfly dissection. 
this butterfly detection makes this cooptation point or line make it further posteriorly and make C sept longer, which can can be safely avoid SAM postoperatively. So you see the distance like this after. So you see no regurgitant SAM, no turbulence in the left ventricular artery tract. Let's see one case. 68-year-old male presented with exertional palpitation fatigue. This patient was actually a physician, cardiologist. He had been sending me many patients. And the one day he spoke to me that I have a patient. Oh, what kind of patient? Who, who is a patient? He said, me. He knew he had a matter of regurgitation for 20 years and the remaining did the uh, data. He was referred for matter by repair. Can you see this video? Let's see. Let, okay, let me do, do it. How about this? Do you see this? I can see. You can or you cannot? I can. Okay. Butterfly resection combines a triangular resection from the prolapsing edge with a reverse triangular resection to the anus to remove redundancy. 68-year-old male presented with exertional palpitation and fatigue. He was on sinus rhythm. Transthoracic echo demonstrated severe mitral regurgitation caused by broad P2 prolapse. pre repair TE demonstrated prolapse in P2 segment with thick tissue. Severe regurgitant jet was directing toward the aortic valve. The valve is exposed. Water tested to confirm the location of preplet prolapse, P2 prolapse, and extremely elongated excess tissue was not. This case have very, very extremely elongated free margin of a prolapsing segment. That might be chronic change of this disease. So in this case, the height of P2 segment was 28 millimeter, very high. And A2 was 25 millimeter. That is average height. The butterfly was designed for this segment Using a small paper scale, the resultant height of the new P2 segment was said to be 15 millimeter. I sometimes use this marking pen because this redundant tissue. The first triangle was cut by scissors. The leaflet tissue was thickened, suggesting myxomatous degeneration. The second reverse triangular resection was designed and carried out with its base at the annulus. Number 11 bladed knife was used. Cutting leaflet in deep chest may not be easy sometimes. So I put this... Uh, some... The three corners of the cut leaflet was sutured by 5-0 plowing with C1 needle and was brought down to the anus. The suture was tied twice. These two corners suture to bring down the, the remaining leaflet to the anus. Yeah. But this specific case have very the thick three leaflet. corners of the cut leaflet are then brought together and secured, at least temporarily, with another fiber of suture in figure of eight style. 
So cut margin become a reverse T. It can be crossed by interrupted, can be crossed by running suture. Yeah. Lately, more running suture. The water test was repeated to check the leaflet shape and coaptation line. The prolapse was eliminated and the ideal coaptation line was created. The cut edge already approximated to the annulus was then sutured to the annulus using a free end of the first suture in over and over fashion. There was no regurgitation. Ink test was performed. P3 segment appeared slightly high, but was not prolapsing nor causing some a dislocation. Therefore, I left it alone. Adequately, large surface of coaptation was confirmed and the repair was completed. Post repair TE showed no MR, no sun. The C step distance was adequately long, allowing the anterior leaflet excursion in the posterior direction. So back to your presentation. Yeah. So we also presented in JTCVS journal that long-term outcome is uh, uh, equivalent to the classic repair, the long-term outcome is reliable with this technique. So let's go to another topic. What is the feature of mitral annulus in degenerative mitral disease? What do you think? This is type two is basically excess motion of leaflet. It's a typical of degenerative mitral disease with rupture coda or elongated coda, you know. What do you think about mitral annulus? Marcio, do you have any idea? Uh, I think mitral annulus can be dilatated, can also mm -hmm. be modified. Right. You are correct. So what we did is checking the shape of uh, 3D analysis uh, employed by, I mean, very sophisticated um, Mm, how to say trans esophageal echo during operation we check all degenerative matter disease also ischemic or functional matter valve disease also no matter valve disease like uh, cabbage patient or aortic uh, aneurysm patient what we see interestingly is uh, we check that AP diameter or lateral diameter or some, uh, how do you say, height and ellipticity. Ellipticity is uh, circular or elliptical and yeah. non planar making a three dimensional. What we find is very, very interesting. Degenerative diseases are so different from others. So typical one, you see in a normal matter of leaflet, a normal annulus, you have a very elliptical, also subtle shape and quite small. Ischemic matter valve, that may be slightly dilated compared to normal, and uh, slightly circular, Ellip ellipticity will be root, root, I mean, decreased and become flattened. However, most of the degenerative, you see, look how different, big, huge major annulus, also circular, 
It's not elliptical and flattened. This is a reality. But I didn't notice because I am always watching the metal valve <laughs> during cardiac arrest. So uh, that much different. I'm very impressed. This is a typical one of the uh, uh, I think the degenerative disease. There was a study. I was concerned how this matter annus dilated. There was a paper from uh, Philadelphia. Annular elongation, annular geometry was also, I mean, analyzed by transesophageal echo. What we found, because I wanted to know, annular elongation is only on the posterior annulus. MMR is a myxomatous matter regurgitation, which is equal to what I'm saying, degenerative matter regurgitation, DMR. Okay, they compared similarly normal and ischemic. What we see here, circumference of anterior matter annulus is uh, quite dilated. You see normal 39, almost 40. This is almost 50% increase. Posterior is 63 and 72, slightly increase. So there was, uh, I think, a widespread misunderstanding. Posterior annulus is only area to be dilated many cardiac surgeons saying so, but that is not true. Anterior annulus is not protected by fibrous trigon at all. It is dilated. Very interesting. So the answer is no. Annulus is dilated at both anterior and posterior part of the annulus. So, after learning these things, valve remodeling in chronic, what you see here is not only the corridor rupture, you may be some marginal elongation of uh, disease leaflet segments, also height elongation, a probably posterior annular dilatation, of course, and probably anterior annular dilatation. That is a reality. So we have to take a look at not only, not only looking for rapture core, and we have to make sure these other parts is uh, playing important role after repairing. Do you know cooperation is invisible in serine test? Another thing, I'm not certain I mean, Brazilian resident may be young enough to get the chance to do the repair by yourself, but you, you have to have uh, some certain thinking way. You see what the sailing test, you watch the sailing test and so you're a senior surgeon doing it? Yeah, sure, but uh, yes. I think that- uh, Eliminated agitation. Yes, we did it. A kind of sensation sometimes. However, we don't know the area of cooptation until ink test. But ink test is usually uh, due after the repair. So rather not the test, it's just like a confirmation. Well, we never know this area of cooptation until the end of the repair. So what I started is making dot, two dot, five millimeter and 10 millimeter at the beginning of the repair. So depth indicator, which will show how much amount of leaflet tissue of anterior leaflet remain in the left ventricular surface, I mean left ventricular cavity which is sometimes important because that is a factor of uh, causing sound. You understand? Yeah. You, you have a two centimeter of uh, 
uh, I mean, uh, anterior leaflet tip below the coaptation line, that may be a problem. So when and how much do I decide to resect the leaflet? So a typical way is just putting this and measuring the size and marking two dots. And for example, posterior leaflet, just make a triangle resection if it needed and approximate cut margin. If it is too high, I add this another reverse triangle. That would make a butterfly. But if remaining uh, leaflet height is short, let's say 12, and I'm, and I'm gonna do butterfly technique because it is not, it is not appropriate. Because the remaining height, remaining leaflet tissue is important. Then what we do here, we see putting these uh, circumferential stitches for, uh, how do you say, under uh, things and grab six o'clock, seven o'clock or five o'clock, make it Pulling down to make AP diameter larger, or sometimes pulling up the making this cooptation big, I mean uh, deeper. The making this, playing with this, the making something this, you know, between five to 10 millimeter, which I want to make that's appropriate, uh, I'd say. And this AP diameter of uh, uh, anterior posterior uh, diameter to set the sides of the ring. That remaining, I think. So we design the height of leaflet, also we design for the height of cooperation. That is my uh, latest technique of the uh, repair. So what we can control, it's not that many. However, we can control the, we should control the height of posterior leaflet, also the coaptation line, which is a key, I think. So triangular resection to start, approximate, and then check the height again. And just putting this four steps up and down. And this diameter with appropriate depths of cooptation, which was 30 in this patient. So remaining, I think designated depths of cooptation can be achieved. The height of Height, height of a posterior leaflet is also designed. So, Marcio, I think that what well, that was pretty much uh, what, I'm, what I'm doing right now. That is just one way of uh, doing it. Some surgeon claim we don't use any cutting. We put uh, maybe a lot of loop technique or a quarter, five, six, seven. I don't mind, but, but in my humble opinion, I think if you cannot cut leaflet, you cannot treat that any endocarditis or other type of patient. If you want to um, succeed in 100 cases without any failure, you need to know that how to resect and what's the result and the matter valve. Also, you need, to, you need to learn how to put the uh, appropriate length of uh, nail cutter, which is not uh, today's topic. However, it's also important. So there is sometimes very huge uh, posterior leaflet, like uh, previous video, sometimes very short. 
So we need to individualize. I think the, uh, this uh, repair was actually, this is a different one. Can you see the video? No? Let me see. Now you should be able to see. Yeah. This patient have rupture cord right over here in P, P2 or 3. But you see, it's not that high compared to the last case. Yeah. Now I always check non-disease segment height also. So this patient only have a 15, 16 millimeter height. So this patient, we employ triangular dissection first. The important thing is with approximation, what's the height? This is only 16, 17. So no need for butterfly. The butterfly make it too small. So what is important is a resultant height, resultant leaflet segment area. This patient was, uh, I think, completed with 34 ring, P2 to 3. The remaining height, it looks pretty good. That one thing. This is another patient. This is a P3 segment. Big A2. P3, you see this? Quarter rupture. But P3 was not really high. You see where the quarter was ruptured? I just marked where, where was the prolapsing. This marginal range quite wide. However, similarly, you see P3 is not really high. In this case, we put just a figure of eight, CV4, and simply put it into the margin of the prolapse. Actually, putting nail corda is much easier than resection and suture. I think key is how to make it uh, appropriate length which is another topic of a lecture, I guess. <laughs> but it, so I use both nail quarter technique, also dissection technique. I think we should know both and we should individualize for the patient. I think that uh, we should just uh, running can you see the video? I mean, PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. So there's a, actually, there is not a typical case at all. Many cases have been different. For example, some cut margin lengths are different. So half butterfly, half just triangular. It can be applied in many different way. But I think it's uh, today's, uh, for example, you check this. This is normal P1. 
P2P3 is very high, but only prolapsing here. What I do is a cut triangular, not a reverse triangular like this, rather just a small left side, large like a sliding plasty. How about this? Two prolapsing segment, deep indentation between. We make a triangular resection, then butterfly to be applied, P2. P3 can be also applied butterfly. This multiple butterfly can be easily applied. However, sliding leaflet plasty make these leaflet or just uh, this, I mean, everything, it, it's not appropriate for this. So, in summary, posterior leaflet height can be very high sometimes or normal, or slightly high. So, in a classic resection strategy with annular application compression, quadrangular resection was, uh, I think, textbook. But in a very high Carpentier employed a sliding leaflet technique. But we are uh, in the era of uh, less resection. We just make a modern resection, limited resection with triangular resection. If too high, still need something, which is butterfly. This spectrum, the way of thinking is important. I think it's uh, almost uh, coming out. So, degenerative MR, you see, uh, I think it's uh, all the time. There's a master surgeon only can do the mitral repair. But that experience of failing is very personal. Don't you agree? That's very personal. Yeah. But I want to make it to understand direct measurement of the leaflet makes some start point then we can optimize height or area with uh, just like my technique. And also this is very important, C-sept co-optation. Where is the co-optation? How deep the uh, co-optation? Deeper the better? No, that's old. I think appropriate size of co-optation to be created, the important. Neocorda plasty can be applied anywhere, anytime. Then com always complete ring annular plasty. I don't use the partial band. In the final adjustment, in the assessment by TE echo. The very systematic way of uh, thinking. Because all matter regurgitation having some their different continents, different face. But we are not uh, surprised or upset because uh, each uh, major valve have a goal or target to be fixed. So summary of today, degenerative postmatter regurgitation, not only called the rupture, but uh, some height, margin, thickness, lead redundancy already exists in variable uh, degree. Direct measurement leaflet, that is uh, make it not, not just feeling, just make it a uh, more proper way of uh, repair. Butterfly resection is applied only when it is when more than 15, or I would say more than 20. You do not use it for short posterior leaflet prolapse. Coaptation, it's important to know, to be aware for mitral valve repair. Butterfly is beautiful. So not too much trendy, respect rather than resect. When you resect, resect with respect. Thank you very much. This is of my final of that lecture today. Is this your Yes. Is this your YouTube channel? Yes. Okay. Uh, later, I will 
show to the residents uh, the link of your YouTube channel. And for sure, they will enjoy a lot of techniques like uh, the harvesting of the mammary artery and a lot of other popular videos that you have. And I think this lecture was a masterpiece, masterpiece professor. Thank I you. Like also the resect with respect. Yeah. That's correct. I, I, would, I would make a lot of questions for you, but um, in the flow of the lecture, you, you were answering all the, the questions. And I, I think that you was very didactic and Maybe the, the residents can, they can review your lecture uh, as much time as they want. And I, I, I don't know I, how much time you, you still have. Maybe you, you have to go to the OR, I don't know. I just got the phone call, but the, uh, uh, I have a clinic of a new uh, clinic patient also uh, operation after. Yeah, but uh, for sure it was a very complete, complete yeah, give me an email, which uh, email address can be written in my YouTube channel page also. Okay. You can just use uh, specific question from your red, from your friend resident of Brazil. You can personally uh, tell them my email address. I'm happy to answer any questions. Let's do it. I will. I will try to make your channel more popular than than it already is. And <laughs> Professor, Professor, let me tell you, my channel now having uh, eight hundred thousand access. Oh come on! <laughs> no, no. I, I cannot. I cannot make it more popular than it is. It is already uh, a ve very pop. Very pop. So, but uh, we we have in our channel maybe 600, 600 oh, right. viewers, followers. Uh, for sure, I know that your channel will bring a lot of knowledge for us. You know, a lot of a lot of learning in each technique, and very precise, very didactic. And I, I, I just want to know if you have a, a few words to say to us in the, in, the, in the end of this lecture. Okay. Well, Marcium really motivated me a lot since I, I first met in Milan. Look, Brazil and Japan, that's the other side of the earth. The growth is too small nowadays. So we can learn whatever you want all around the, from all around the world. Your project is really making this dream true. I'm one of your fans. I'm Keep one of your that. fans. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing you in the very near future. Yeah, I'm looking forward to be there too and to see live yeah. all your techniques and to talk to you and to see your beautiful country too. Not only Marcio, I'm, I'm just uh, praying for all the best for the Brazilian cardiovascular resident watching this video and uh, making sure that I promise your effort will not betray you. Effort will make you the real good cardiac surgeon. I sincerely want to help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor. You have a nice day, a nice week, and we hope to see you soon in another lecture here. Okay. Good night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.